Hey, it's Holden here giving you a tight end breakdown here. Early to midweek breakdown. Just some initial thoughts looking at the salaries on DK and FanDuel. Hopefully you guys are subscribers to Run Pure Sports. If you're not yet, get over there. $80 a month. All our DFS and showdown content. Run Pure Bets to Get over there if you bet. Uh, some tremendous content from JJ and Keg and my boys over there. All right, here's the deal. We're going to start at the top. Travis Kelsey, 7 k on DK, 7-8 on FanDuel. And if I have any exposure to him this week, it'll be in tournaments. Um, top price, I don't see it paying off. Uh, Kelsey has a – it's a difficult matchup for him. Now, if you want to go back the last two years, again, it's a small sample. It's all we got in NFL, though. Four and a half catches, 46 yards. He scored one touchdown in those four games. Um, it's a high total, but it's almost like throwing darts here with this Chiefs offense at this point. Uh, I'd like to see him settle down a little bit and see Kelsey getting, you know, more volume. I'd like to see Tyreek Hill get some more volume, but I'm just not on Kelsey this week. And I'm not going to be on Kittle either. Kittle's the second highest price. He's at 7-4 on FanDuel, 6-7 on DK, and he's got a knee sprain. Okay, now last week people said, oh, you, you had Kittle against Arizona. You guaranteed he was going to be great. They gave up 16 touchdowns last year. He had four for 48 in the first half, and then he tweaked his ankle. OK, and then they gave him a run and that was it. He was on pace for a nice day, eight to 10 catches. You know, he's going to get 80 to 100 yards. He might have even scored. But I don't like the injury. Jordan Reed might be an option, though, if Kittle is out. OK, just remember that. Now, Jordan Reed is the most brittle player in the NFL, but he's 2.6, 2.6 on DraftKings. I don't think Kittle's going to be out, but I'm just saying if he is, go that way. My top target here at tight end, if I'm paying up, it's definitely going to be Mark Andrews. He's uh, you got to pay for him too. Seven five on Fanduel, six three though on DraftKings, and this to me, boom, right there is the third highest price. He's my number one guy. Uh, the Browns, th there's this system I have called uh, adjusted fantasy points against, and it's something that my buddy John Paulson, one of the great redraft like season long fantasy guys. So we're at four for four. He came up with this metric, and I really bounce a lot of stuff off of it and do some projections on DFS with it. And it's adjusted fantasy points. You adjust it to the competition, and the Browns were awful last year. They got injuries to um, to Schobert. They got injuries to their uh, – they got another injury to their young uh, corner as well, their second-round pick. Six targets, five catches, 58 yards, two touchdowns. If I'm paying up, Mark Andrews is my guy. Uh, we can also look at Ertz and Goddard. Listen, Goddard, nine targets last week. Ertz got seven, both scored, but it was eight catches and a touchdown for Goddard. Good matchup. I can see going either way. I still think on a week-to-week -week basis, Zach Ertz is going to be the guy. Yeah, I read the report where he and Howie Roseman, the GM of the Eagles, were screaming at each other because the contract situation. I just think from time to time, Goddard's going to have a bigger week. It is a difficult decision there, and I think it's a GPP play uh, for me with the Eagles tight ends this week. Evan Ingram, Jared Cook, I'm going to throw these guys in together. Uh, why? I don't know. It's a good question. Maybe I shouldn't throw them in there together. But, um, you know, Ingram's coming off a horrific, uh, just a completely horrific performance. Now, Jared Cook isn't even on this, so I don't know why I brought him up. But um, Ingram got completely shut down by the guys that I think is the best uh, defense in the NFL. So this week, he's got Chicago. So <laughs> it's not getting any easier. I'm crossing him off the list at 5-3 and 6,000 over on FanDuel. TJ Hawkinson. Decent matchup against Green Bay. If you think that Green Bay is going to take the lead, hey, maybe Hawkinson. Five targets, caught all of them, 56 yards at a touchdown. He's healthy. Uh, I'm there. Right around there, I think you got to go up just a little bit, is Darren Waller. Now, am I doing this again? Did I? Am I sitting here talking about guys that were not even on the slate? Jeez, I just went through every single tight end and I did that. Uh, let's move on because he's not on the slate either. Waller is it? Derrick Henry, shootout against Kansas City. This is my favorite mid-tier tight end. 5-1 on DK, 6-1 on FanDuel. It paint a little bit up there on FanDuel. Uh, shootout against KC, eight targets, five catches last week, 73 yards. Ty God loves him. He's my mid-tier pick here early to midweek. Tyler Higby, here's another one. Four targets, three catches, 40 yards against Dallas. Um Three, this is what I really liked about him, 3.4 yards per route run. That was third among tight ends with Kelsey and Andrews. So he's getting out there. He's running big routes. 
I like it. I, I, I like this a lot with Higby too. Does it concern me with Gerald Everett? Does it concern me? No, it, it doesn't. Uh, I'm fine with Higby. Great price. 5,800 on FanDuel, but 4.7 on DraftKings. That's where we might want to target him. Just going to throw out some names here without even prices. Hayden Hurst, five targets, three catches, 38 yards. Gets a great matchup against Dallas. Little gun shy last week playing him. Really didn't have a big game. Did get targeted. Noah Fant, one of Drew Locke's favorite targets. Six catches, uh, six targets, five catches, 81 and a touchdown. Very tough matchup against the Steelers this week. Eric Ebron, speaking of the Steelers, what the hell happened to this guy? He was supposed to be the red zone target. If you're uh, MME, multi-entering uh, in a GPP a tournament, two targets, one catch, 18 yards. Maybe, maybe this is the week that they get him going in the end zone. Denver still has enough manpower, though, to limit the tight end. Uh, Jonu Smith, love the Jonu Smith. Let's do some Jonu Smith here. He played Monday night, so he wasn't priced up. 4.2K on DK, 4,900 on FanDuel. Well, I'm not saying he's the chalk because I think Andrew's going to be up there. I think Henry I like a lot, but if you're saving money, seven targets, below average matchup against Denver last week. Now he gets Jacksonville. Mwah, I love it. Uh, Dalton Schultz. Here's another one. Want to save some salary here. Schultz is with the Cowboys. So Jarwin went out, and he's 3.7. Schultz is 3.7 on DraftKings, 4,000 on FanDuel. There's some good value at tight end too, but uh, four targets after Jarwin left with that torn ACL. Falcons gave up 13.6 FanDuel points to the tight end position last year. Don't look much better this year. Olsen had a nice one. Disley even had a couple carries. I'm okay with Dalton Schultz. Logan Thomas, Red well, Washington football team, second in receptions on that Washington football team, second among tight ends, all tight ends with eight targets. He's a cheap play, 11.7 FanDuel points last week. Again, I can think of a lot worse guys at 3-6 on DK and 4-7 on FanDuel. And lastly, Jordan Akins, maybe you guys want to go there because he caught a touchdown against the Chiefs. Uh, I liked him in showdown in that game. But there's no the floor is very low. The ceiling is pretty low, too. I am not on Akins. All right, so that's the positional previews this week. If you missed it, check out quarterback, running back, wide receiver. All our great content here at Run Pure Sports all week long. Don't forget about the bet side, too. Some of the best minds in the in industry. We've got a great live show over there, too. Just cleaning up during these live shows betting. It's amazing. Uh, thanks for Captain. Thanks to Captain for running the show here on this uh, I'm Holden, and I will see you soon.